All right, so I have uh, two topics I'd like to go over in this video right quick, which none of my videos are hardly ever quick. Even the quick ones are long as shit. Uh, there's two topics. <clears throat> We're going to go over one of them, and then I'm going to switch drastically to another one. The first topic is about Ellen Page, The Last of Us, Ellie. The second topic is about Quantic Dream, which is going to be ugly, ugly, ugly. Anyhow. I'm really sick and tired of seeing all of this <clears throat> buzz over Ellen Page. Now, I'm not talking about Beyond Two Souls. I'm talking about The Last of Us. I've seen so many times on a, on a web page, on a forum, Facebook, <clears throat> someone would ask, who is the actress that did Ellie in The Last of Us? And some idiot that doesn't have five seconds in his life to fucking Google information says Ellen Page. No, it's not Ellen Page, you moron. It's Ashley Johnson. If you take five seconds to Google it like I did, you'd be well informed. This drives me crazy on a number of different reasons. Uh, for a number of different reasons. Speak English, Brett. It drives me crazy because Ashley Johnson is the person that brought Ellie to life. This person was the one that did her voice, did her personality, and <clears throat> when they changed their ideas, yes, I'll talk about that, that's the face that they modeled Ellie more so after. The original version of Ellie was modeled after Ellen Page's likeness a little bit. Yes, I get that. But you see, that's called an original concept. And occasionally original concepts change. You see, <clears throat> people focus on the thing that could have been, and it's supposed to focusing on what really is. You know what else was an original concept? You know, Kratos originally had dreadlocks and blue tattoos. But now he's a pale white man with red tattoos. What I really love about Kratos, though, <clears throat> the reason he has pale white skin and that tortured past was because the artist originally had just drawn him pale white because he didn't know what race he was or was going to be. And the developers liked it so much they just rolled with it. You know what else was the original concept? The battle rifle from Halo was originally going to be a single shot firearm. And they changed it to a three round burst. What other weapon is a single-shot firearm in the Halo universe? The DMR. But now they're different guns, as opposed to just one. You know what else was an original concept? Well, slightly original, I guess. It was in the sequel. They were originally going to change Cole McGrath's appearance in Infamous 2. <clears throat> and then the fans flipped their shit and decided to, they decided to keep it the same. See, these are ideas. They haven't come to fruition yet. They're just in the ether floating around, kind of like most of what Peter Molyneux has promised us. But it drives me crazy when you have a finished product like The Last of Us, and you have this woman that worked really hard on it, and all of her PR is going to fucking Ellen Page, who didn't do anything with the game, and was even a bit of a cunt when she's like, well, that character looks like me. Yes, Ellen, tell us more about how humans are similar in features. It drives me crazy. And uh, <clears throat> I kind of have a hate hard on for Ellen Page just because I don't like her. I don't have a real big reason to not like her. I just don't like her in regard to how she responded to The Last of Us and Ellie looking like her. And I don't like her in regards to some of the movies she's been in. Like, the only one I know of but right off the top of my head is Juno. And I hate that movie. Oh, really? Another movie, another feature in which we're glorifying teenage pregnancy. Yay! Great. Our country isn't in the shithole already. <clears throat> I'm just not real crazy about it. So, on the topic of Ellen Page and The Last of Us and all that stuff, we now shift into Quantic Dream, a company which I kind of hate. Alright, I have Indigo Prophecy over on my shelf. I liked Indigo Prophecy. It's not that great. What is with Quantic Dream and their aspirations for making movies? If you want to make a movie, just make a movie. Don't make me an interactive movie where I've got to do this all the fucking time. That's not fun. Can you have fun with it? I guess the number of people sucking Quantic Dream's dick and giving them nice little scores on their newest game is proof of that. But I can't comprehend how you can just take a controller and waggle it, press some buttons that are prompted on the screen, and say that's innovative, or fun, or anything entertaining. It's, it's not. To me, at least, it's not. And don't go and say, oh, well, you just play Call of Duty. You don't understand. Fuck you for that. Because I play a lot of very narrative-driven games, alright? I like story games. The only problem is, I like for my gameplay and my story to complement each other, instead of having two big steaming piles of shit on both sides of the spectrum. 
Let's take a look at Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain was a big, pretentious mess. Quantic Dream was saved by Sony when they bought that up, and of course they had to put the motion control waggle bullshit in there with it. The thing I can't stand about Heavy Rain, though, is its story's not good, and its gameplay's even worse. Please explain to me why people can't walk in that. They seem to have fixed it in uh, Beyond Two Souls, but still, people couldn't walk in Heavy Rain. That didn't even begin to pop into the developer's head at any point. Hey, you know the guys are kind of walking like they've had aneurysms? Ah, it doesn't matter. People will buy it anyways. Because it's exclusive and people are stupid. It drives me crazy. But the thing that drives me even more crazy about Heavy Rain is it's supposed to be a narrative, story-driven game. Alright? In Heavy Rain, you are following the trail of the origami killer. You're trying to find out what's happening to these kids, and you're unraveling a mystery that is actually rather deep. But the problem is, it doesn't matter what you do in the story, or who randomly gets killed, because that can happen in the game if you fuck up and get stabbed in the face or something. It doesn't matter who gets killed. It doesn't matter what you do in the game. The origami killer is always the exact same person. I don't want to spoil it for you if you really like Heavy Rain or you're going to play it or anything. It's always the same person. I know who it is, and it'll always be that person. Why? Because Quantic Dream didn't think maybe we could have changing, branching narratives. I don't know. I don't know if Beyond Two Souls has branching narratives. I've heard there's a plethora of different choices you can make, but I'll bet my bottom dollar the ending is always the fucking same. Heavy Rain was garbage. Beyond Two Souls is going to be more garbage. All right? You can't just say the game is good. Throw it out there with your pretentious story and your terrible gameplay. And then expect to get money back. That's what Peter Molyneux does with his bullshit. Oh, it's good. Buy it. Really? Because it kind of plays like garbage. You know? Combat's bad. Story's bad. Gameplay's bad. Waggle, waggle. But you know why I really hate Quantic Dream? <clears throat> I hate Quantic Dream because of that guy. I think his name is David Cage. I think that's it. I don't know if I got his name right. Whoever the guy is that goes, emotions, 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 emotions. I hate this guy. Do you know why I hate him? And if you've clicked off the video, disliked, and left an ugly comment, and haven't watched this part, you're a fucking moron for not hearing my entire point. I hate this guy because he's everything that's wrong with the industry. This is a guy that complains constantly that the tech isn't strong enough for him to present his story, for him to give you enough emotional impact to be invested in the story. Hey, I got a hint for you. Maybe if you fucking put some effort into it, it wouldn't be a steaming pile of shit. I hate this guy because he complains about polygon counts ruining his games. Some of the most emotional, impactful, moving stories I've ever experienced in gaming have been from games with sprites and polygons. Anybody ever play Final Fantasy VI? Final Fantasy IV? My favorite game, Legend of Dragoon, has really shitty graphics now. And it's more emotional, more impactful, and more driven than any of your crap. I don't like you because instead of trying to make something and putting your heart into it, all you do is sit there and bitch about the tech. What? Are you going to get off your ass and make a game when you can make a character that looks as realistic as a person? Is that when you're going to finally make this amazing game that you're striving for? No. Then you'll complain about something else, because that's what your kind of people do. You don't need polygons. You don't need amazing, super-duper graphics to make a great game. Have you seen some of the amazing games that are being made on a PC? Indie games? Have you ever seen a game called Mad Father? Go check that game out. That game's got mo more emotional impact than your game. Way more. And I mean that. The thing is, I don't care if you like Heavy Rain, I don't care if you like Beyond Two Souls. You're supporting a shitbag who makes the industry far worse because he complains about the polygons. He complains about the tech and says that he can't make a good game because it's not good enough. I've got tons of games on this shelf that prove you wrong, my friend. Alright? i got lots of games. Story-driven games that prove you wrong, okay? And if you want, I'll look over and start naming them. Most of them are Final Fantasy. What is it? Vagrant Story, Final Fantasy 1, Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 4, Final Fantasy 5, Final Fantasy 6, Final Fantasy 7. 
I don't even like Final Fantasy VII, but you know what? When Eris was stabbed, you know why? Because you spent the entire first disc getting to know her. You spent time with her. You, you hung out with her. It mattered. Because the people put the effort into it. It's called gameplay. It's called character development. Something that your titles severely lack. I can go on. Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy X, X-2, Final Fantasy XII. I'm not going to 13. I don't like 13. <clears throat> Mass Effect. Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma had a better story than I thought it was going to. You guys should really play it. I should really talk about it. Lost Odyssey. Blue Dragon. Infinite Undiscovery was pretty bad, but even it had character development. Tales of Vesperia. Yuri's a badass. Eternal Sonata. I haven't played that yet. <laughs> oh, man. Lots of different games. What else? What else do I got? Uh, Dark Cloud. Dark Cloud 2. Star Ocean to the end of time. Xenosaga. You know what I'm noticing about a bunch of these games? They're RPGs. Maybe you guys should make a fucking RPG. But it's not just RPGs that have uh, story-driven stuff and has impactful moments. You can have that in the action games, too. Uh, a really bad example off the top of my head because it's the most prominent thing on my shelf. The Suffering. You know what The Suffering has? Good gameplay. And a good story. It's got a lot of intrigue. And based on your character's actions, based on the player's actions, you can change that story. Are you a murdering psychopath that killed his family and his wife? Or are you a guy who is framed for murder and redeems himself on an island full of fucking monsters? I don't like Quantic Dream, and I don't like this douchebag. Emotions, emotions, emotions. <sighs> because they're pretentious, annoying cunts. And they make bad games. <laughs> if you like Heavy Rain, or if you're enjoying Beyond Two Souls, that's good for you. I enjoy bad games from time to time as well. I really like Dark Sector. <laughs> but it doesn't change the fact that this person is just awful. And he bitches about polygon counts and graphics ruining his, his, his gaming proficiency. Because he can't make a good game without super amazing graphics. I hate it. Tech whores and all that bullshit. Drives me crazy. Let me know what you think in the comment section. <clears throat> Do you, did you enjoy Heavy Rain? Why did you enjoy Heavy Rain? Was it the bad gameplay? What about the story that was caving in on itself? Are you enjoying Beyond Two Souls right now? What are you enjoying about it? Tell me. Because I don't see it. And again, it's not like I'm some kind of dude who just plays fucking first-person shooters. However much I like first-person shooters. I've got a ton of RPGs on this shelf. I've got a ton of story-driven games. I've got action. I've got adventure. I've got horror. Hell, hell I didn't even mention horror. <laughs> One of the most impactful and emotional moments for me in gaming was when I played Silent Hill 3. Spoilers! I played Silent Hill 3. I was playing as Heather. And I came to her home to find that Harry Mason had been murdered. You know why it bothered me? You know why I cared? Because I spent all of Silent Hill 1 playing as him trying to save her. And then he escapes the torment of Silent Hill just to be murdered by the cult later on. That killed me right here. Team Silent stabbed right in the heart. And it was so good. So good. Emotions. And you know what? The graphics? Meh. That's good game design. That shows the difference between a talented team and a team of pretentious cunts. <laughs> Loved it. Every minute of it. So what excuse do you have? None. You can't make good games. You can't even make good movies. You make crap, Quantic Dream. Steaming piles of crap. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you all take care. Uh, I don't know how, how many uploads are going to go up today, but I've already shot something, and this is the second something. I might shoot some more. I don't know. We'll see. Have fun, everybody.